Hey everyone, this is Jaden the Mew, and welcome back to another video about technology. Today we have this iPod Touch, 7th generation, and uh, if you don't know, this is actually the latest iPod Touch that you can buy right now. I'm te I was test driving it uh, for a few days, and uh, I'm done doing that, and I'm going to return it tomorrow, so I'm going to do the video today. This is a 128 gig model, and uh, has an 8 megapixel camera, a microphone, a flash unit, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna band thing right here, black thing, and uh, the iPod logo, Apple logo, designed by Apple in California, the model number assembled in China, and the serial number. Now, this also has a 1.2 megapixel uh, front-facing camera, and there I am right there. Let's turn it on. And as you can see, I have it set up with my Apple ID. There's the wallet thing. I can open Discord. It actually loads decently fast. And uh, it's definitely not as fast as modern smartphones, but it's more than suffi uh, suffice, or more than good for, you know, basic function. The battery isn't too bad, and they apparently added a uh, percentage uh, gauge there. They added a function to this where you can go into system preferences, go into battery, and turn on battery percentage. Every other iPod Touch looked like that. It, it, you did not have this option. That's pretty useful, at least for me. Have them in an airplane mode, I'm going to turn that off. Now, uh, as you can see, Shoots in 1080p, 30fps, but I have actually figured out a way to uh, shoot in basically 4K, or higher res 1440p. I use Movie Pro. Now, uh, I have it set up to that. I would just recommend shooting in uh, 1440p. Which, as you can see, is right there. That's 1440p. 4K is right here. So let's start shooting. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jaden Lemieux, and this is a test recording. And then we can play said test recording right now. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jaden Lemieux, and this is a test recording. We can save it. We can even upload it to YouTube from this app. The app is called Movie Pro. It does cost money, but it's a useful app to have. Play it from here. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jaden Lemieux. And yeah. It still says it's in airplane mode, even though it's not but that should be fine. You can play YouTube videos in here. It's actually also decent, decently quick, but the display isn't even 720p, so. Cool. Remember to like the video, by the way. This can play 1080p video, but I wouldn't recommend it because you won't be able to see it. Oh, I love handheld text. And yeah. The speaker is decent, although it's not that great compared to modern smartphones, which have stereo sound. This does have stereo sound, but it's definitely just coming out of one hole right there. It has a headphone uh, jack, which is really good for, you know, playing music and test tones and crap. It also has a lighting connector. I like it. You can also uh, just download like a crap ton of apps. Um, so one thing that I have is Doom. It's a really good game, you should play it. It's pretty slow to load, but I still like it. And you can still use add-ons. Look at that. Oops. 
There's uh, another trigger button up here. I wouldn't say this is very easy to play, but you can play it if you really, really wanted to. And there's all these cool add-ons. And of course, there's Doom 1 and Doom 2 on here. I also have apps like Minecraft, which loads up decently quick. Let's test that really quick. Look at that. Let's load up a world that I already have created. This can go up to uh, 16 render distance chunks. That's a lot of blocks. Now it's about what my desktop computer's render distance is set at on Java Edition. And it's pretty goddamn smooth as well. Churn floating is nice and slow, but would you rather have fast chunk floating or slower uh, and slower frame rate or would you have slower chunk loading and way better playability and frame rate i think you would choose the latter hope button sometimes doesn't work as you can see kind of really have to press down for it to work <laughs> that's something that i had happen on my sixth generation ipod touch as well this has the A10 Fusion chip, but it's clocked down and with twice, or with half the cores. So obviously, uh, it's going to be a bit slower, but uh, not by a crap ton. Only by about half. Then the iPhone 7. You can also play games like My Singing Monsters. The connection uh, is decent. It's about as good as my modern smartphone here, and my 10-year-old MacBook. I also play Terraria. Goat Simulator is on here. Hulu, Netflix, those both work pretty well. Marathon is a neat game. I would recommend it. Someone in this house played through the entirety of uh, uh, Marathon 1. That's really loud, by the way. Look at that. Those uh, fade effects are kind of neat. This is a kind of Doom-ish type game, but it's still pretty cool. And what's cool is it uses the sensors. Which is pretty neat. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. No, let's go to the menu. For some reason, orientation is locked on that game. I don't know why. There's three of them. They look about the same. Just have different levels, maybe different weapons, different players. I don't really know what the differences are, because I've never played it, but my dad has all of them. Survival craft I have on here. I have all the cloud storages that I could use on here. You could also call with this iPod Touch, even though you, Apple doesn't allow you to do that originally so let's call my uh, actually that's not call my phone my phone is filming this but you could theoretically call someone i'm not actually going to type in a number because then i would have to blur it out and i expect to upload this as just one big video it also has an app library like iOS 13 and, or iOS 14 does, because this runs iOS 14.6 and up. Look at that, iOS 14.6. Of course, this is iPod Touch 7th generation. I named it Touch This iPod. <laughs> and I uh, have 78 apps on it. Capacity 128 gigs, has 100 av available. I turned all the back, like most of the apps off from background app refresh. Because basically what that does is it will uh, make it so that 
apps will refresh in the background. So they'll just run in the background, which is actually really annoying sometimes. So whatever I would recommend doing is uh, just turning a lot of those off. Like Google Photos doesn't need to run in the background. Uh, Discord doesn't always need to run in the background. But then again, if you don't have that on, you won't get notifications. So just something to keep in mind. And uh, the radios for location services can decrease battery life, but I would keep that on because there are some things you just can't do when you don't have it on, like maps. You can't use maps without it. Well, some other functions you can't use without it. So yeah, this is uh, a really slim and little device. It's really thin. It's really, really, really light feeling, and I love it a lot. And uh, charges very quickly for an A10 Fusion chip device, and has two gigs of RAM. So this will probably get iOS 15, but maybe not more than that because of the degraded CPU. So yeah. This is a really good device if you just want something for a lot of music. Because you can get this in 32 gigs, 128, and 256. You cannot get it in 64, which is kind of weird. I thought, I, I don't know why they would do that. But yeah, it's, uh, I think it's $200 for the 32 gig version, $300 for the 128, and uh, $400 for the 256, I think. Maybe not, though. But I'll be returning this either tomorrow or today. And, uh, yeah. I'm Jaden Lemieux, and if you enjoyed this uh, small little review on this iPod Touch 7th generation, then please leave a like and subscribe for more reviews, because a lot more will be coming. I'm going to review the M1 Mac Mini, and I'm also going to surprise my dad with it. Surprise, surprise. Don't tell him. And, uh, yeah as a late Father's Day present to try it out. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'm Jaden Liu, a.k.a. I write MC, and I'll see you all next time. See you guys.